Hey everybody, I received an email from CompTIA the other day, and I shared it with you all. It was an email where they were explaining to me that their CEO would not be able to make it on a phone call with me as they had originally planned, but they were going to be backing away from publicly lobbying against Right to Repair. A viewer of mine also sent Comte an email after watching some of my videos of their anti-repair testimony, and they got a response that they shared with me. And if you take a look at the email that I received and the email that he received, they are from different individuals, but there seems to be a couple of striking similarities there. And I think this really cements home the point, perhaps self-leveling cement, that the dividing line here is not partisan. I mentioned this in a recent video where I was responding to a comment someone made that was very partisan regarding right to repair in a way that I don't think it is. That this is not about left versus right. This is not about Democrat versus Libertarian versus Republican. This is not about iPhone user versus Android user or Apple product user versus Lenovo user or authorized technician versus unauthorized technician. At the end of the day, what this comes down to are people who are speaking from the heart and saying what they mean, writing words and speaking words that come from their experience, from their expertise, and from their heart, and words being spoken by someone that someone else wrote that they don't really understand the meaning of. The video game won't play the console. That they don't even necessarily believe in. It's people who are free versus people who are puppets. Uh, we believe this legislation is in search of a problem that does not exist. Something that's resonated with me is something that you heard early on here, is this is legislation in search of a problem. It's people who are providing productive services to society, and on the other side, people who, in my opinion, are rent seekers, who are doing their very best to hide the fact that they make a fat paycheck while not seemingly adding much value to society besides creating these low quality copy pastas. So that you can still feel confident that what you're getting back is a phone that does not have TikTok put onto it. At the end of the day, I think it's really important that if we are going to band together and we understand where the dividing lines are and don't try to push people out that don't belong on the outside, because there are many people who watch my channel, there are many people who show up to these hearings, there are many people who are involved in the industry that I'm in that may disagree with many of the things that I say, and they may disagree amongst themselves about a number of other issues, but where we stand in unison here is that we both believe in the concept of personal property, of owning our personal property, but above all, when we speak, we are speaking words that we believe, that we understand to be true, not someone else's words that were made up bullshit. We are free men and women, and if you wish to remain free, there are gonna be certain forks in the road that are gonna be very important for you. About 12 years ago, I remember being very, very broke and destitute, and I actually went to take a job at a company called Atlantis Health Insurance. I remember them telling me that I need to make sure to take every single customer down in my phone with their name, what status they're in, and the applying for their health care, so that if they called me, I knew who they were, and I thought, oh, this is great, this is because they care about customers. No, it wasn't. It was because the moment that I sold them, I could no longer take their phone call because they didn't want me wasting even one second of effort helping a pre-existing customer. When they wanted me to start selling people, they talked about different methods of selling, and I tried certain methods, like, you know, just walking into businesses and so on and so forth. And when that didn't work, they handed me a phone book and had me start calling different pharmacies. And I called one or two, and I realized people don't really like it when they're expecting a phone call from a customer or an interested client and they get a telemarketer. This is not the side of, of, of life I want to be on. And I quit. I put down the phone book, I put down the phone, and I walked out. And that was about a month and a half before I started this company. A few months before, I was in a house filled with termites with a landlord that would tell me, What are you, Pinocchio? They're not after you when I would talk about the fact that the place was filled with termites. Even at that point in my life, I was able to make a choice. And that choice was, I would like to retain my soul. I would like to be a free man, even if it means being a free man living amongst termites. I would like to retain my identity. And I think it's really important that when you find yourself at a point in your life where you're reading words that you feel ashamed to read on a piece of paper, when you find yourself writing sentences that sound like this, that make no sense, that you be honest with yourself, look around and truly honest, were there really no other options that you could have taken and retained your freedom,
your identity, and your soul. I think it's really important that the people who have disagreements on this channel, that want to see Right to Repair move forward, understand that regardless of our differences politically, socially, religiously, economically, financially, that at the end of the day, regardless of our differences and beliefs, what keeps us together, what unites us, is the fact that we speak what we believe. We speak the truth as we know it. We speak from our life experiences, from our knowledge base. And they read off a piece of paper that they didn't even write. At the end of the day, we are going to be proud that we showed up and spoke the truth to people. And they are likely going to be so embarrassed of what they've said, so embarrassed of the fact that their future children may see that they were having their strings pulled, copying and pasting stuff from a knowledge base that a social media manager told them to write, that they're going to file fake privacy claims on videos to try to have it removed. At the end of the day, we've retained our soul, and we have retained our humanity, even if we disagree with one another. That's the dividing line. That's the true partisanship when it comes to right and repair. Not left or right, not religious versus atheistic, not Apple versus Android, not authorized versus unauthorized. Human versus puppet. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.